Hello, my name is Darcy Baruda. Um, Rob has asked me to come and uh, see if I can speak with you or make contact with you, if there's anybody here. Um, I'm getting some readings on my K2 here. Um, are you okay with me being here? Can you light it up to two if yes? It's saying something, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I don't mean any harm. This device that I'm holding will not harm you in any way. I'm simply here for you to leave a message or just simply speak with us or leave a message for the staff. This will not harm you, as you know. This is Peace Region Exposure with Blake and Rob Brown. I'm your announcer, William. Ghosts include ghost hunter Darcy Barruder, and we are out to 101 acres with Lincoln and Blake Frank. And now on with the show. Keep my wife's name out of your f***ing mouth. Peace Region Exposure. Here we are. Your penultimate ninth episode. Count them up. Blake and Rob Brown here. We're coming at you from 101 Acre Woods, just north of Mile Zero. First rains of 2023 are putting out a lot of the fires in the region as well. This week's guests include our continuing interview with Dan Ball about the Canadian legal system. Of course, we've got an interview with the proprietor here, Blake Frank. Great first name. And as well, we've got an interview with local Mile Zero ghost hunter, Darcy Baruda. Get Blake, we've got some of the other segments we've grown to know and love. Who do we've got this week in our second last episode of Peace Region Exposure? We have a Natalie Quinn with Noah. Oh. And a Minute with Quark. What is it? Fitness? And you're absolutely right. With Devery, Miss Devery, and Cameron Palfy. And of course, we're going to bring back Marvel Hawkeyes, Alex Ponovich, bro, in another Marvel Minute. But right now, on with the show, episode 9. Alright, alright. All good to go? Good yeah. to go. Tonight we're going to have the Strawberry Gin Smash. It's a house original. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to throw some lemons and some mint. Give that a good slap. And then what you're going to want to do is muddle that all in there. Add some ice. There's some strawberries in there. And then what you're going to want to do is add an ounce of lemon juice and an ounce of strawberry simple syrup. You want to top it up with soda. Give it a good old stir. Try and bring all that fruit up. Add just a little bit more ice. Pack it down in the middle there. And you're going to want to take some Empress Gin. Add an ounce and a half to your cocktail. Just gives it a nice little purple coloring there and then you're going to want to throw on a lime, uh, some mint, and a strawberry. And there we go. Here's one more just on the on more, I guess, on the acting side of things. I mean, I, I can think of five or six actors that they join the Marvel uh, Universe or DC for that matter. And then they're not playing that character anymore. Are there other characters that you're looking at? You go, geez, I'd love to have a crack at that. 
when I'm oh on man, that Marvel world, man, I'd love to have a crack at any one of those. I mean, it's it's especially being a part of it now. Um, and I, I, I love my character in the Tracksuit Mafia. It was just super fun to play, and it was a fun show to be a part of. Um, it did extremely well. All right. Peace Region Exposure. We've got another fantastic, interesting conversation with Darcy Baruda. Who are you going to call? Maybe Darcy. Why, why, uh, why were we talking to you today, and why, uh, why that um, Ghostbusters reference? What's going on uh, with you today? With us today? Um, and what do you do? What do I do? Well, yeah. basically what I do is um, I do investigate supposed haunted houses or um, strange phenomena that goes on in people's houses. Gotcha. So what they do is they call me in, and I do a little investigation using the K2. The K2? Yes. And obviously that's not a mountain. What, uh, yeah. what, is, uh, what is a K2 and what does it do? It yeah, actually it reads uh, electromagnetic fields. So it's an EMF? An EMF, yeah. yeah. EMF, yeah. Uh, EMF, yeah. yeah. Right. And it's believed to be said that if there is um, a person or an entity in front of me or nearby, uh, these lights will light up. Okay. Hello. Um, I don't know if you're the same uh, person or persons that was with me five minutes ago in the archives room, but um, Rob says he hears hears some noises, what sounds like footsteps and going on in here. Um, could you come uh, come close to me and you can yank on my shirt if you don't want to do this, but uh, the machine. Um, nudge me or come in front of this device that I'm holding it won't harm you and could you light it up to the first notch if you are here the first the second light for for us so is it on now it's on now. so we'll see if it lights up while we're doing our conversation absolutely there you go Lord knows this is an old building now you mentioned residents and you get a lot of obviously people reaching out to you um, yes do you get uh, people obviously um, looking, is it more based on they're looking to make or have some contact made with family members that have passed or is it a case of sometimes, I'm sure it is, the building themselves, uh, like the one we're sitting in yes. or I can think of other buildings in town where they've just got that hundred years of history. hundred years of history and they'd like to have it checked out. Check it out, yeah. Basically it, it's different, it varies every time I do an investigation Okay. Like, and uh, a lot of the times, the main reason why I like to do this is... Um, if somebody calls me in, mm -hmm. I've had a friend do this one time before, and he actually found out that it was uh, a poison gas leak in their house. Okay, like the currently at the time. Yeah. So he thought he heard something, something from that if you will. Saw and then yeah, things yeah. move, but it ended up being a carbon monoxide leak. Okay. And uh, my my partner actually saved their life. Yeah. Because he found out that's what it was, got everybody evacuated right away, and. and brought in the proper team so yeah a different kind of exorcism yeah tool. Well, what other tools are there and you know to to measure um these sorts of activity well there's something called a goss meter a goss, goss meter, meter. okay yeah. and is that named after somebody the g-o-s-s -S, goss meter no no it's okay just, just the name of the product oh is that right yeah okay and what does the goss meter do as far as measuring it pretty much does the same thing as the k2 okay but it's, it's a it's almost like a gauge i guess if you will Okay, so like with a needle, it spikes up and down, oh, okay. reads the temperature fluctuation of the room. Of the room, okay. Yeah. And uh, one of the other instruments I use is an infrared gun. Okay. Okay. Yep. And it also reads different measurements, and uh, it's got a little TV on it. A temperature. A temperature. Or uh, for, uh, just to make a colloquial people that are familiar with the movie Predator, that type of vision. Uh, that yeah, that's that a good way to just okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you, it's going to light up if they're throwing more heat than. Yeah, and then the like cold spots are yeah. the ones you want to look for. Yeah. And then um, I understand there's also something that measures, uh, you know, the what we'll call the um, the snow or the the, the, the white noise on a, on a. Yes, that's called a ghost box. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. It's a ghost box. And basically what the ghost box does is it surfs through um, radioactivity. It's really quick. So quick through... Um, through the FM or the AM dial? Yeah, through okay. the FM or AM dial. And basically what you're listening for to that is a whispering noise. Okay. And the whispering noise is what they call the white noise. Yes. Okay. And so the entity or, or the person is communicating with you from there. 
And is that a case of uh, it being one one or two words coming through the white noise, or is it phrases and whole? Sometimes it yeah. can be phrases. Okay. Or sometimes it can be one one voice. But I'd have to say the one that stands out would be the Hart Hotel in Goose Coopies, where I felt um, a nudge on my shoulder and got lots of disembodied voices. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of action there. A lot of there's... action yeah. there. There was yeah. actually one point where I was up in one of the rooms investigating, and I was up on the second floor myself because okay. it's deserted now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking through one of the rooms, and what I thought I felt was kind of some somebody or something pushing me my shoulder against the wall like this, so leaning me. Well, that was pretty interesting, and I wasn't even touching yeah. that. Yeah, that was what I said. It's very rarely you will see an apparition. Right. Yeah. You know, they, they like to communicate in their in ways like this, tapping or pulling on the shirt or. Yeah, it's just not coming in and having a. Having a sit down right here, kind no, of like not, nothing like that. And uh, look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some reading here. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for making contact. Yep. Yeah. That's more than I was expecting. Thank you very much for your time and um, if there's anything else, please feel free to say what I should do next time we're off the spring and Royce recorder to see if I can pick anything up for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can always leave one up here too. <laughs> yeah, I just put it onto uh, audio. It's the old media trick. Leave the phone and then come back. <laughs> Peace Region Explosion, Proust Coopy resident, Darcy Baruta. Thank you. Ghost Hunter. Ha, ha, ha. Because we need horses, we need trees, we need tents that are made out of hemp. <coughs> and yeah, we should kill that <laughs> newspaper guy because he kills lots of <laughs> trees. Peace Region Exposure, Rob Brown here. We've got a, another fantastic interview with fantastic people of the peace. We're up the 225 Watson Road, just north of Dawson Creek at 101 Acres here. And we've got, yes. of course, our owners and proprietors, Blake and Lincoln Frank. So what's going on when uh, people say 101 Acres? What's going on out here? Quite the facility. Uh, 101 Acre Woods is a new event venue. We do weddings, birthday parties, reunions, wakes, and even camping. Quite the mix, yes. reunions and wakes and weddings yes. and camping. Uh, so, yeah, we're ready for it all. the whole spectrum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally, yes. Yeah. yes. Birthdays to when you're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but no certainly yeah, certainly yeah. for the summer months and, and, and uh, you know, when uh, we're up in the peace, we take advantage mm -hmm. of the, the limited summer months and, and the warm weather we do have. Yes. That camping and RV option is something that is lacking. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly not lacking, but uh, certainly not enough of up here. Obviously, uh, something yes. you're uh, looking at uh, with some of the grounds out here. Yes, totally. We're, uh, we're expanding our campgrounds and just trying to host as many people out here as possible. And and uh -huh. uh, and a throwback to something. Certainly, I'm the oldest of the three of us, but before my time, is the the idea of that community hall. Um, that is something that is getting lost with uh, certainly people older than uh, me. Yes. But certainly, when you have that community hall facility and that component here. Throwback to it's, a gathering yeah, of another time, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a centerpiece yeah. and host about a hundred people in nice. there. Easy. It's beautiful. It's it's usually cool all all the time around, and um, it's we can host pretty much as many people as we want. We can open up the barn doors and have it all open to everybody. And uh, you know, a modern day community hall. Of course, you got music banging and uh, Wi-Fi access and everything yeah. that comes with. Uh, a modern facility as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. We got Wi-Fi six. We got four K cameras for uh, recording all your events. We're up with the Joneses. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Absolutely, the Franks and the Joneses. Yes, and of yes. course, unless there's a uh, provincial or a local fire ban, campfires aplenty. That's right. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Music, fire, lots of fun.
camping to stay overnight. There we go, 101 acres. Yeah. Check it out. Up yeah. the Watson, 225. Ooh, Peace yeah. Region exposure. Make your traditions here. Yeah, traditions yeah. are made here. Is that uh, you can put a thing in the small claims court? Sure, yeah. And maybe put a lien on his car. Great. Or put, or put, or guarantee his wages. But yeah. Guaranteeing a wage, a lawyer's wages. Well, and to get, but I mean, you're still going through the same hoop that you've already yep. done really twice because you had, the, you know, when he first passed on and then get the, the yep. second court order in 2015, paid a lot of money for, um, yep. and for a lot of money. And that's court essentially order. what the lawyers have told us that yeah. uh, I've got more money than you, and if you give me a hard time, I'll break you. You just don't wait. Yeah. Yep. And again, that's part, isn't that part of the process? Again, it doesn't have to be just this or, 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 or something contentious. It's just, if you can outweight the person, yeah. money or not, you can outweight them, right? I or or, is, or is allowing for court orders that don't have any enforcement, there's no teeth to the, you know, you could write them on the toilet paper and unless you want to follow them, it doesn't mean, it's, yeah. it's not, it doesn't matter if the judge stamped it or not, it's just, it's more expensive paper. I won't go through it all, but I made a list of all the people that I told about this. I've seen, yeah, well, yeah, and I mean, it's, it's quite extensive here, the, and the one I've got here, yeah, by I, the way. I told all... <coughs> The MLAs from most of the districts and the members of parliament. And, and how is that? You know, I mean, obviously they, they, you they know, can't do anything. Yeah, and what they don't they? even know the quarter. The, our members of parliament don't know that court orders aren't enforced. Well, and in their defense, they probably don't get in court that much themselves, right? So how you know it's a situation where they yeah. <laughs> really don't know until they know. Same with me. Yeah, I didn't realize until you know I've had one signed, and then the, I don't even had RCMP go. Yeah, we can't. There's nothing to enforce here because it doesn't say that we can go if it's broken and enforce it. And yeah. it's amazing that that is such a, to be quite honest, a loophole. Yeah. <laughs> because it will, I don't have to follow it. What are you yeah. gonna do? And uh, the lawyers. Unless you mouth off in court, that's the only time there's a contempt coming, right? And You're not supposed to, that's the, you know, I'm sure most bank managers know how to rip their own bank off. The trick is that's why they're hired there. They're bondable and they're honest and they don't, right? Like. And. There is mental health issues in there. The, the girl that was living there. Oh, the, yeah, but the, here nor there with this, right? That's yeah. And what did happen, Michelle was going through the police, and she filled out a freedom of information form. Sure. And she found out in 207, this lawyer and her sister filed murder charges against my lawyer. Oh, Lord. Right, I remember yep. talking about that, yeah. And, and possibly one other family member who... Yeah. So we got a redacted 17-page Freedom of Information for it from okay. the Calgary Police Service. Yikes. Listing Michelle as a murder suspect. Yeah. And the murder of her. her dad died. Yeah. He fell and broke his hip. Went to Peter Lahey Hospital. Fixed his hip. Mm -hmm. And was due to be discharged the next day. Yep. Had a heart attack because he had a body heart and died of ma massive coronary in the hospital. Yeah. My wife was in Chetland, BC. You don't have and to the lawyer, for that. the lawyer and yeah. her sister accused but her that's, you know, I mean, of murder. Yeah. And so that affected her big time. Oh, yeah. She adored her dad. So mental health issues are. Oh yeah. Uh, are in the family. Oh yeah, no but that you know not something and, age related or to be taken advantage of, right? I mean that's yeah. that's nonsense. Yeah. So. Dan so. Ball. Thank <laughs> you. No, yeah, absolutely, like. Uh. scary stuff what's going on uh, for when people say Halloween movies uh, mm -hmm. and then let's, we'll, we'll stay away from our Jason's and our, and our Freddy's kind mm -hmm. of a little bit and our Michael Myers mm -hmm. but uh, as far as a Halloween uh, movie or series mm -hmm. uh, what jumps out uh, and gives you the scares either as good flicks or, mm -hmm. or just scary movies uh, I feel like um, a very underrated Halloween movie is Trek or Treat um, That's great. Yeah. Um, it, it should have been uh, turned into a franchise but for whatever reason it's been stuck in development hell um, it's uh, sort of a, uh, an anthology about different Halloween stories taking place in the same night. Uh, so it involves like ghosts and uh, uh, slasher killers and, and um, 
and werewolves, and there's this, um, I can't remember uh, the, the, the character that had, he has a pumpkin head, maybe his name is just Pumpkinhead, but um, that's their sort of like uh, the horror icon for the movie, and it's, it's really, really funny, it's a great horror comedy, it certainly has um, uh, remnants of like Raimi and, uh, and Carpenter in there, um, and I think it's just a fantastic, highly creative, uh, really, really fun Halloween movie that you can watch every year. Very good. Uh, I'm gonna pick one uh, again. Uh, going back 40-ish years, uh, friend of the friend of the show, Don Coscarelli's Phantasm. Um, I get a kick out of this one because it truly is an independent horror movie. Uh, where it was him and his dad funding this movie, um, and it was crazy. I mean, it had uh, Jawa-like midgets the year before Star Wars came out, and then just because Star Wars has got a bigger budget, it looks like Phantasm ripped off the little Jawas. <laughs> um, and it's got the flying ball that drills into people's heads, and that's kind of the iconic business there. And uh, a bit of filmmaking uh, 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 trivia, they took about a week to figure out how they're gonna light every any scene with the ball, mm. because they've got this mirror, and then at, at one point, Coscarelli goes, we don't have to light the scene, we just gotta like what's reflected in the ball. Mm. So then they weren't trying to light the ball, they were trying to light everything else, and then mm. by, by proxy, the ball's giving a good shot. Right. Um, great film, uh, again, uh, the tall man gets uh, pulled out and he's kind of that, that iconic bad guy that gets lumped in with the, the Jasons and Michael Myers and your pinheads and stuff. Mm. Um, I like the movie because it is a low budget movie and then Hollywood realized what cost really had and the next one all of a sudden is a multi million Phantasm 2 is a multi-million dollar show and I think they had to recast the lead. James LaGrosse had to be cast because mm. they needed a name in it. And it didn't make as much money as the mm. uh, the original because it was a little more passion project. So then yeah. come Phantasm 3 and 4 and then 5, which just came out this past uh, past couple of years, Ravager I think it's called, mm -hmm. um, much more low budget, much more focused on um, mm -hmm. old school effects. and. Uh, Great film. I'm gonna. We're gonna have to ADR the guy's um, name in. But one of the greatest child uh, actors, performers I've ever seen. His name is actually Michael Baldwin, not one of the Baldwin brothers. But mm -hmm. uh, his stuff as as the kid in the first one, and then he was in a, a couple other early Coscarelli flicks. He's a great child actor uh, and should be up there with whoever else is considered a, uh, mm -hmm. one of the great child actors of all time. But, yeah. Uh, check it out. Phantasm. The ball is back. If it don't scare you, you're already dead. I think was the tagline. <laughs> That's a great tagline. That is a really so good tagline. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite franchises uh, is is one that evolved over time. Um, Superman. So, yeah, yeah, Superman. I, I, That's great, fourth one is great scary. Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary <laughs> that it got made. Yeah. Um, uh, Evil Dead. I love the first one. I love that it's got this raw quality to it. That yeah. it just feels like it's a bunch of friends that went into the forest and they wanted to make a horror movie. Um, and I especially love that the sequel, Evil Dead 2, um, completely changed genres, like it completely yeah. changed tones. Uh, it went from serious horror in the first one to a horror comedy in the second one, um, and it kept all of the best elements of the first one. I imagine the budget probably got increased for oh, the second one as yeah, well. Definitely. Like the yeah, definitely. Phantasm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in the third one, it just became a parody of itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third one is uh, Army of Darkness, and it is just an incredible film um, in every respect. Super high production quality. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny in all the right places. It's serious where it has to be. Um, and it was good enough that uh, it got a series. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. Ash got a series, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Um, and then it got a reboot mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, <clears throat> just straight up Evil Dead. They, they redid the first Evil Dead um, and they played it again as a horror film. Um, and it was decent. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and now we're looking forward to Evil Dead Rise, um, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, Sounding like it's going to be a really good film. Yeah, taking it out of the woods and putting it in like a like an apartment building. Yeah, I, high rise. I think um, it's Evil one Dead of the takes Manhattan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Evil Dead lost in New York. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's one of the best horror franchises that I've that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about actors that get tied to roles like you know Harrison Ford and a couple and, and, and Tom Cruise and, and a lot of things he does. 
uh, Bruce Campbell. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. uh, I cannot imagine now anybody else no. in that role. It's that man in that role, and you kind of think, well, when he go moves on, there's not going to be another Ash. It'll be son or daughter of Ash because mm-hmm. it's so intrinsically tied to to that gentleman playing the role. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. phenomenal casting. Um, Sam, Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi, yeah. Sam Raimi, one of my favorite directors of all time. Mm-hmm. He did uh, the first three Spider-Man movies. Uh, was going to do the fourth before it was canceled. Yeah, yeah. he just Very did Doctor excited Strange. He just did yeah, Doctor Strange. Dark Man was his, I think, way back in the day. Too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With Liam Neeson there. Yeah, yeah. and you actually see a lot of uh, the same elements in Doctor Strange too uh, that you see in the uh, first two Evil Dead movies. Like, yeah, he took a lot of um, inspiration yep. from his own work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that was like, it was a very bold choice for a Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, we're getting into that era of Marvel movies now, is whatever it's Phase 4 or 5, where they are bringing in directors that do have a vision, where they're not just the Roosters, where they've only yes. really done these these Marvel movies. Where mm-hmm. been, and we were talking about Edgar Wright earlier, same thing, yeah. they are attracting people with quote-unquote visions of their own. Right? I, I, mm-hmm. wish, I wish they had let Edgar Wright make an Edgar Wright film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why he was canned from uh, Ant-Man because of creative decisions that he wanted to make that didn't fit with uh, Marvel's vision. Yeah. And I think Ant-Man was lesser for it. Yeah, yeah. But then you always get, you know, for every uh, Ragnarok you get, you can get a Love and Thunder 2. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I don't want a Love and Thunder (laughs) 2. Let's leave it at the first one. (laughs) Talking about about a a true scary movie, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Again, scary that I got made. <laughs> the bottom of the jungle. <laughs> good. Sweet. All right. Peace Regent Exposure. That was episode nine, our second last here in this experiment in the art of conversation. We had a lot of fun putting this one together. Of course, we're out here at 101 Acre Woods, just north of Dawson Creek. Uh, the, the rain has put out the fires. First rains of 2023. We're out here documenting that for Peace Reason Exposure, of course. But of course, we'd like to thank our guests this episode. Of course, Dan Ball, talking about Canadian court orders and the legal system. Of course, our interview with Blake Frank out here, the proprietor of 101 Acres, and of course, co-owner with Lincoln. And as well, we'd like to thank our regular segmented guests that you grow to know and love that are part of the fabric of Peace Region Exposure, and of course, our ghost hunter, Darcy Baruda, who you gonna call? And speaking of that, we always wonder where the next episode and the next adventure of Peace Region Exposure is gonna take us. Now we just need that foot. Aha! All right, put her down. Yep! <laughs> Peace Region Exposure. You bet. We're on our way. Shorty, bring the dogs. Okay. Are you going? where the next episode of Peace Region Exposure is going to take us in the next adventure. (laughs) Hey buddy, how's it going? (laughs) This is Peace Region Exposure with Blake and Rob Brown. I'm your announcer. Keep my wife's name out of your f***ing mouth.